Welcome to the Scoop World Order. We I'm here with my team of insiders, Bill the Bank Green and Nevada Buck. Uh, we previewed the skill positions on offense our last episode. This episode, we're a little more near and dear to my heart. We're talking about the bigs. So we're talking about the O-line, the D-line, and our lonely little tight end, Jeremy Ruckert, and his happy, merry bunch of tight ends. So uh, I'm going to start with the O-line just because, you know, they come first in life, right, Bank? And uh, I'm going to start with you, Bill Green. Give me your projection for the starters on the O-line. Obviously, they know the tackle is pretty much in ink and concrete. And uh, give me the, the middle three and then your first couple of guys off the bench and maybe who to watch out for as camp unfolds in a few weeks. Yeah, I think the uh, the interior is going to be Harry Miller, uh, Matt Jones, and Paris Johnson. And, you know, I'm not sure if it's Harry Miller as the center or Matt Jones. I think it'll be Harry. Um, you know, and, and, and as a guy to come off the bench, I mean, I, I think you and I were pretty wowed by Enoch Mamahi, even though yeah. he was just a counselor at camp. You know, he wasn't blocking yeah. Alabama. But, I mean, yeah. he was a lot taller than I ever imagined that kid to be. Mm -hmm. He was a lot longer than I imagined him to be. Um, he looked like a tackle to me with the wingspan. Um, you know, we both saw him. We, we, we were not standing together. We both saw him launch himself off the ground out of a three-point stance into that blocking sled. And I remember coming over to you saying, did you see the, you know, and you said, yeah, I saw it. It was on. <laughs> I, I was mean, like, holy shit. Yeah, it was, was unbelievable. Like, and I mean, if it, you know, <laughs> it's easy to impress me, but to impress you with something like mm -hmm. that meant a lot to me. So, you know, I think the interior guys are set. And I think the, you know, the tackles are the good as anyone has in America. Yeah. So, you know, I think everything is pretty well set, to be honest. Now, you know, I, I guess, you know, Luke Wickler maybe could try to make a move somewhere in there. And I think mm -hmm. he's really good. Um, but, you know, I, I think we know pretty much who's going to be on the field for him this year. Yeah, I uh, I agree with with a lot of that. Nevada, give me your take on the O line. Who do you see filling out the middle three, and uh, maybe some guys you see as dark horses to contribute this year? Yeah, see, I, I've got a little different view of the offensive line, and you know, I think you've got three guys, you know, in in the tackles and Paris Johnson that you can kind of absolutely put in ink and and, and slam them in there. But I'm, I'm telling you, the other two positions are a battle right now. And there's a lot of guys that are throwing their hat in the ring for those positions. And it's been one of the more interesting things because typically at this time of year, you do know who's going to start. You do know who the guys are going to be. And we can almost talk with like 99% certainty about, you know, who's going to be the center, who's going to be the guard, what's going to happen with that. I don't think you can do that this year. You know, I think you've got – Luke Whipler, I think you've got Matt Jones. I think you've got Enoch Bamahi. You've got Josh Fryer. Um, you've got Dewan Jones. You've got Harry Miller. I mean, you've got a lot of guys that are all saying, "Hey, I can I can play one of those two interior positions." And you know, if I you put a gun to my head right now, I'd say Harry Miller at guard and Luke Whipler at center, but that could switch. And, you know, I, I think you've literally got six or seven candidates for those two spots. And it, it really speaks to the depth of the offensive line room and, you know, where we're at you know, from a development standpoint, which is really, really a lot different than where we've been in the past. We've, we generally had five guys, maybe a six, maybe a seventh, and then pray. We really do have some guys that can play and a lot of guys that believe they can play. And I, I think a turning point was last year, when they had three guys go down the line uh, at the same time with COVID and the other guys stepped in and, and played well against Michigan state. I think that was a turning point for a lot of people on the line where they, they, they know they can play and they, they know that the backups, you know, I'm not saying they're as good as the, the, the first line guys, but they know they can play. And uh, you know, I think that belief has really carried it through to this off season. These guys have been working hard been you know, carried through the summer conditioning and, um, I, 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 like I said, I'd be careful about any proclamations about who the guys are going to be because a lot of people, if you ask the guys, they all think that they're going to be starting this year. So it's going to, it's going to be fun to watch. Yeah. That, that Michigan state game was a turning point with the offensive line. And the fact that they lose the two tackles, at least three starters, basically a day before the game, they go out. You have Max Ray play right tackle. You have Dwan play left guard or left tackle. Excuse me. Matt Jones is in there. Like you kind of have three guys that just got thrown into the mix 
and it didn't look like vomit. It looked really good. I mean, you knew Michigan State was going to blitz and pressure, and they weren't going to stand still and make it easy because they knew they had a bunch of guys that never started a game before up there, and, and they looked great. And I uh, I agree. I think that Thayer, this is a big money year for him. Two back-to-back years of, of good health to be a first-round pick. I think Nick Petit Fair might even go higher than Thayer just because he's a little bit younger. I think he's a little bit more athletic. Both phenomenal you know, first-team All-American type tackles. And then it gets interesting. To me, I've got four guys that are basically in pen. I think Harry Miller is going to have a spot. Paris is going to have a spot. And I don't know if Harry's going to play center or left guard. Paris is going to play right guard. And I don't know if the center is going to be Luke Winfer, if it's going to be Harry Miller. Um, a dark horse, you know, Josh Fryer is a guy that I've heard a lot about in, at left guard. He had a great spring. A dark horse for left guard, and this would be phenomenal TV to watch, is Dewan Jones. Dewan's been working at left guard this summer, and he is – I could imagine being, you know, a guy and having Thayer Munford and DeLon double teaming. That'd be the most miserable experience of in history. But I, I, you know, the thing that's it's funny right now is like, there's a lot of guys that, can, that are tackles and they're all trying to play guard right now because our tackles are so good and they have no chance of beating them out. So you've got, you know, the tackle line in drills is real short because everybody goes to the guard line because they all want to get reps at guard so that they can start, you know, because it's, it's tough. And I, I really think Harry Miller is going to have a much better year. He had a torn labrum last year. He got it corrected. Um, I saw him when I saw Addison <laughs> randomly at a restaurant, and he looks like just like a Greek god. I mean, he really has put in the work in the gym. And I told him, I was like, dude, like you've been – he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, he's probably 315, 320, and he is not the little doughy face sophomore that he was last year. I mean, he looked great. And I was like – I always I joke with those guys. I was like, I never had a guard like you guys before, ever. And I was like, I would have killed to have Wyatt and Jonah Jackson and Harry and Paris and good lord. And and the guy that I trust more than anybody in the Woody Hayes right now told me it's the most athletic line he's ever had. So and that's that's a guy I really trust. It's not a player, but someone I really trust. And I was I was impressed by that. But uh, we'll move on to uh, everyone's favorite position at Ohio State, the tight end. So obviously we have a guy who's potentially an All-American. He's a guy that probably be a first or second round pick. He might catch 12 balls this year, but that's just how it is at Ohio State. If he was at Florida, he'd probably win the Blitnikoff like the kid did last year. But uh, let's talk a little bit about Jeremy Record and our, our bevy of tight ends. We'll start with you, Nevada. Well, other, after I've already called JT Tumalo to become a tight end and become an All-American tight end, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, skip, we'll, we'll skip him for right now. But, you know, I mean, the – Getting record back was really big for Ohio State for the position. You know, they you want to have a dependable tight end. They've shown that they'll throw to him on occasion. He's not going to catch a ton of balls. That just won't happen in this offense. But when they do throw it, like they did with great effect against Clemson, you want guys that can go out there and catch it. And you know, I think you've got three guys there with Jeremy Ruckert and Cade Stover and and Gee Scott, who I Gee Scott's kind of the wild card because he brings a different dimension to the tight end position. Um, you know, being a wide receiver and being an elite wide receiver, it's going to be interesting to see what, you know, you know how he does at that tight end position for Ohio State. And if, if he brings something that they try to, you know, isolate and try to exploit. Um, but I like all three of them. Like I said, Kate Stover has been kind of a man without a position, but it has really looked good at tight end, really, really looked comfortable in that position. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't want to go out on the limb and say this is the year that Ohio State discovers the tight end, but. They've got guys that when they when they go to them, they can depend on them, and that's uh, that's a nice luxury to have. Bank, what are your thoughts on our tight end position this year? Yeah, I think um, you know after you and I, we talked to G. Scott at mm-hmm. camp, and maybe I was just so impressed with the kid because he's just a great kid, you know. And sometimes, you know, I, I think people can fall in love with personalities, and you kind of you have to separate that from the talent. Now he is not going to be able to put his hand in the ground, three point stands and in line and knock people off the ball. That is not going to happen. He's not big enough. He's never going to be big enough. But mm-hmm. as a matchup nightmare, you know, as an H back or something, when you throw Smith and Jigba, uh, Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave out there, who would be covering G Scott? It would be like one of the worst players on the field in coverage for these Big Ten teams. He's going to be open every time. If you, you know, and it's so tempting to throw the ball to a lobby and Wilson every time. I mean, I would do if I was a quarterback. I'm, those guys are open when they're not open. So it's hard not to throw it to them every time. But if they go three wide with G Scott in the slot, 
I, I, you know, these Big Ten teams, they don't have two guys that can cover, let alone four. So, you know, if you want to go to him, he's going to be there and he's going to be really tough to cover. So he's a guy that I'd like to see explode, you know, especially, you know, he just lost his mother recently. He's just such an easy kid to root for. And so I hope that he finds a role in this offense. And, and I think his skill set would bring something to Ohio State that they haven't had. You know, Ruckert is he's an inline tight end. He's not Kyle Pitts. He's never going to be Kyle Pitts. G. Scott just might be a Kyle Pitts mm-hmm. in terms of how devastating he could be when you're giving so much attention to those other guys. So G's kind of my guy that I hope he makes a move. I love Stover. I hated seeing him go to tight end to a dead position like that when I think he's as good at the end as some of those other guys that play there, but they see practice every day and I don't. So you trust it. And Rucker, you know, coming back surprised me. It really did. And I think it was huge for Ohio State to have that, you know, rock solid guy back in the lineup. I think they threw, you know, I think they threw to him one and a half times a game last year. So maybe two, you know, you have to look at the stats again. So you're not going to throw to him a lot. But like Nevada said, when you need him on third and eight, he's going to catch it. His catch radius is amazing. So just get it in the area and he's going to catch it. So, you know, I, I like the position. I like the versatility of the position that those guys are all kind of different guys and they can kind of be moved around and you can kind of use them the way you want to use them. They're not all duplications of talent. They're different. So I, I like that. Yeah, I, I agree. And one of the benefits to us all, as the scoop mafia covering camp was the fact that we got to see some of those kids work out a little bit. Like we'd get there early and they'd be finished up a conditioning exercise and they'd go out and throw a little bit. And I, I saw Jeremy record and I thought he looked fantastic. I mean, he's yeah. a guy that's clearly taken this year seriously. It's his money year. So he looks phenomenal shape, smooth, you know, great, great catching the ball, just real smooth with it. And I, I think he could be, a, he could be a big weapon, but again, it's hard when you look at our receivers that like, you know, I mean, is he as good as Jackson Smith and Jigbo? I don't know. Like, who would you rather throw it to? I mean, obviously not Wilson or Olave. They're they're much higher in terms of who you want to throw it to. But it's it's gonna be interesting. And honestly, like as funny as it is with Nevada, like I wouldn't ever throw out the possibility of of, of putting JTT in, a, in like a goal line set or something like that because I'm just telling you, like the kid's got great hands. So it's not it's not insane to say that. And as a recruiting tool, if a kid's a two way player and he's like, I want to catch a touchdown in the stadium, like. Why not? You know, if he's only playing 10 plays a game on defense, like put him in in a goal line set, make him a backside tight end. Cause Ryan Day uses tight ends way more than Urban did. So I think that that'd be compelling. I don't think it'll happen, but if it did, like I would love it. Cause I watch him run around and catch the ball. And I think he's, he's got great hands. And I mean, I think he'd be really tough to cover in the, in the, the, the low red area, like inside the five yard line and in, cause he's so, he's so damn big. All right. So we've wrapped the tight ends up. I agree with record. Um, I think Gee Scott, I told, I've told Gee, or G, excuse me, sorry, sorry, G, um, and condolences with your mother. I'm sorry about that, my friend, if you, if you ever hear this, but uh, I told him, watch, he reminds me of Jordan Reed, like Jordan Reed is a quarterback at Florida, yeah. six foot two, kind of the same body type, six two, three, you know, like 225, 230. And, you know, he's not going to be Gronk and be six six two sixty five 265 and push you off the ball, but, you know, Jordan Reed had a great career and he got open and he was a monster. He had a ton of injuries, but when he was cooking, he was as good a tight end as there was in the league with the Redskins. So that's kind of what he reminds me of. Um, so we'll go on to the D line, and I'm gonna start with you this time. I mean, this is this room was loaded, and it just got a lot more loaded er <laughs> in the last two weeks when we added J, JT to it. So give me your initial thoughts on the returning guys, and how much impact do we get from these these really young guys that we that we just are accumulating now? Yeah, the um, <clears throat> you know when you look at the ends with. Tyreek Smith and Zach Harrison, who I think will be the starters. I mean, those guys are both really good. Like I'm higher on Zach Harrison than probably anyone is. I thought he was really good last year where a lot of people were disappointed in him. I thought he was really good and and I like him a lot. I would have played him more. I didn't think he got enough snaps. So, but then you've got Sawyer and JTT and man, how do you slot those guys in? You know, there's no way to keep Sawyer off the field. There's just no way. I He's going to be like Joey Bosa was as a freshman, like Nick Bosa was mm-hmm. as a freshman. They have to play. You know, do they start him? I, I don't know, but Jack Sawyer has to play. And, you know, I would like to see a rush man package where you take Sawyer and Zach Harrison on the outside 
move JTT and Tyreek Smith inside and just dare people to run the ball at you. And if you drop back and throw, you're going you're gonna to have two seconds or three seconds at most. So I would love to see that. Um, you know, I think when you have Tyler Friday and, you know, Javante John baptiste you know, those guys are good. They're okay as backups. And But I think Sawyer's going to blow by him. And JTT yeah. might as well. I think the question mark, a little bit at tackle, where I think Haskell Garrett's unbelievable. I mean, he's going to he, – he's a great player. But then – I think there's some recruiting misses in there that I'm not real sold on. Um, so we'll see after that. Now, the freshmen that are there, the two freshman tackles, Tyleek Williams and Mike Hall, are going to be players. Are they players against Minnesota in week one? You know, I don't know. But those two can play. So I think help is coming, but this could be a gap year here where, you know, we'll see. We'll see what you get out of some of those older tackles that I'm not convinced can play. But we'll see. We'll see what they have. What do you think, Nevada? Uh, well, I did a little digging on this. I wanted to kind of see who was kind of showing up and, you know, who was making moves and maybe, you know, some of the names that people haven't heard a whole heck of a lot about. And, you know, because I think some of the stars are, are kind of obvious on the team. And, we've, you know, we've talked about, you know, a lot of the guys, you know, ad nauseum. But some of the names that I heard that, you know, that Bill, you know, mentioned Tyler Friday, who's, you know, a player that, you know, I've got really high hopes for this year. I think, you know, Tyreek Smith is going to be a really good player for us. I mean, he's been a really good player, but I think he's going to continue to shine, take another step forward. A kid who's undergone a, a, just a massive body transformation and a kid that I'm real excited about is Ty Hamilton. I think Ty Hamilton is going to have a, a terrific year and, um, you know, getting really, really good reviews from inside the uh, defensive line room about him. You know, as being a guy that's leading the way and, and a guy that's really poised to take that next step. And then a name that, that not a lot of people have been talking about, but, you know, I, you know, talked to a coach who was, went out of his way to, you know, talk about this guy is uh, Jaden McKenzie. And he's a guy that not a lot of people are talking about, has had a really good off season. Um, I, I think he's going to be in the rotation. I think he's going to, you know, I think he's going to play and when he plays, he'll play well. And I think he may surprise some people, you know, um, you know, again, a little bit of an under the radar guy, but I think he's a guy that Ohio State's excited about and, and can give them some big minutes. And you know, as, as Bill mentioned, the two freshmen, you know, Hall and, and Williams, are both just true. I mean, Tyreek Williams is a special, special player. I mean, he he is a a big kid, and, and you know, he he's got one of those uh, those first steps, you know, kind of a la BB Landers in terms of just a, a guy that just explodes through the line. And uh, it's it's hard to believe a guy that big can move that fast, but he's a guy that, I, that I'm excited to see as well. So it's a it's a deep deep defensive line room, a little bit on the inexperienced side on you know some of the interior positions, but uh, I think it's going to be dominant. And you know like you know we talked you know Bill mentioned the the rushman packages. You know, I think you could come up with about four or five different rushman packages that would all be kind of scary to think about. But um, you know you know Sawyer and Zach Harrison coming off the edge is is it's going to be it's going to be difficult for people to contend with that that's for sure yeah i, I think the biggest question with the d-line is who's going to play nose guard because i mean you got haskell who's an all-american you got harrison who's a projected top 10 pick you've got you know jack sawyer you've got you know tyrex who's going to play nose guard because that was something that killed us against alabama's we lose tommy togi and i mean obviously you know he's not he can't cover Devontae smith but we looked much different without our our without Tommy in there at nose it has had to play nose and he just wasn't comfortable playing it you could just tell from the film but uh that's going to be the biggest question of camp and you know the the biggest thing for me is how quick will Jack Sawyer rise up the depth chart I imagine the first day of camp he's going to be the number five DN behind you know Tyreek Smith Zach Harrison Javante Jean Baptiste and uh Tyler Friday yeah. and how quickly does he start eating up the reps of the older guys because he has more juice in pass rush than maybe anybody on the roster. And something that, you know, if everyone's worried about the back seven, the one thing that can save them is getting to the quarterback so that they don't have to defend and cover for as long. So, you know, obviously you got to get those guys out there that can rush the passer. Like that's why, you know, it's funny because we had two separate rush, rushman packages and they both left off Haskell, who's an all American three technique. You could put it nose and then you could put JTT. And I, there's a part of me that really thinks JTT grows into being a three technique. Like, I mean, Bank talked about him being like a Cam Hayward type. 
Yep. Um, I think that's a great comparison. You know, like a guy that could be 315, 66, play three technique and be a dominant athletic interior guy. Where on the edge, I think he's a good athlete, but I don't think he's a he's not like a, a like a, a, a chase like a world beater speed guy like 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 a lot of the guys are there the top tier ends like the von millers and the chase youngs the cleo max but i think a three technique with his length and size i think he could be a major yeah. problem do you agree do you agree with that bank i do and you know if you look at the guy you've seen him in person you watched him walk yeah. off that airplane what do you think yep. he weighs right now is he 270 yeah he's probably two i say 270 ish you know and, and he's probably I, never lifted yet because he plays yeah. hoops throughout yeah. the winter so he probably loses weight you know yeah. during basketball season when he is mm -hmm. a football player and Mickey Marotti has his hands on him 12 months out of the year that guy's going to be 290 295 in no time and yeah. you know I mean he's just then he becomes an, a, a more athletic faster quicker Cam Hayward who's one heck of a player by the way and has been in the NFL and was at Ohio yeah. State so a quicker Cam Hayward who wouldn't sign up for that every day now, you're not going to recruit JTT by telling him this. You know, you tell him he's going to be Chase Young when you're recruiting him. But, uh, you know, we've seen this, this position switch go on before. And I agree with you. I think he would be devastating, devastating as an inside guy. But yeah. he would be devastating as a strong side to end, too. Whatever you want to do with the guy. I mean, he's yeah. so good. I mean, you just find a place for him. Find a home and let him go. Yeah, and it's I think it's just one of those things where where's the opportunity lie, you know, to play early. It's like with G Scott, like G Scott came in as a receiver, but then he outgrew it, you know, and now right. he's playing tight end. And, yeah. and now it's a different it's a different deal because obviously that's not the same talent level with with you know JT, but you know, JT could look and Haskell could be leaving, and all of a sudden he's like, Well, wow, that three technique spot's wide open, and I could just take it as a true sophomore yeah. and you play two years there yeah yeah i was gonna say get like indomitian sue contracts <laughs> yeah and, right I mean, three techniques get paid man i mean they, they I gotta know. rush the passer I mean, aaron no donald like those guys you know they, they're a problem especially the big ones i mean like albert hainsworth was six seven and those guys are monsters to block on the inside so that um but that's that's really good stuff i uh i think uh who do you think has more sacks who, give me okay this is what i'm gonna play give me your top two leaders in sacks from the d line this year and i'll start with you nevada and give me the number yeah I, you know it, i mean it's got to be harrison and i mean that's so tough you know that's i, I mean that's, i'll go that's harrison why i ask it Blair. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go Harrison and Slur, but I, I I think they're gonna they're gonna split a lot. There's there's gonna be just so many guys in there yeah. trying to get sacks, but I I think that they're both double digit sack guys. What about you, Bank? Yeah, I agree with that. I was gonna say Zach, Zach and Jack, you know, for me, but I do think it's gonna be a committee approach there. What I'm looking at is, you know, it kind of dropped off a little bit last year. Now we're back to the the, the 12 game season the Big mm -hmm. Ten championship game, the playoff. So it's more normal this year. you got to get around 50 sacks. That's the goal, mm -hmm. to get to that 50 mark. In the years when you see Ohio State with 38, 39, it's a big difference than when they get 52, 53. So no matter how they get them, I think that 50 sack mark is a great goal to have. And that'll put you, you know, one, two, three, four in the country in sacks. So last yeah. year, I think the sacks dropped off. I think the pressure was there. They just didn't get home enough. They bothered quarterbacks. In Sacramento enough. So I'm yeah. looking this year to see him get back to that 50 mark. And I think Sawyer's a, a big part of it. Yeah, I, I really, truly believe that the quarterback has to go down early and often in the game to really rattle him. Because it's one thing to pressure him, it's another thing to hit him and take him down yes. and lay yes. on him and knock the ball out of his hand. And I mean, that, that, those are game changing plays. And they wear a quarterback out because they get that clock gets a little bit quicker every time he gets touched and you got to touch him up early and often. And Jim Haycock used to put up a big thing that said, affect the quarterback. And it's, I mean, it's, it's never true. And, and, and when our defense has been really good, we've always had a great speed rusher. We've had Joey, we've had Nick, we've had chase. We had, or even, you know, Cam was a speed guy. Like my senior year at Vern, Vern Golson had 14 and a half sacks. So it's like, we've had that guy. That's a problem for people to block. And, you know, that I think, I think Jack has to be that guy. And, I, and honestly, you know, Zach Harrison like, coming into his third year, 
it's his money year. You, know, you always see a big jump from these guys. Really pay a little bit more attention to their diet. They work out a little bit harder, take a little bit more care of their body. And, you know, they do that. And then magically everything kind of comes together. You know, they get, they get, they get home more because they're a little healthier, a little, little quicker, you know, so it's, it's funny how the, the money can drive some of that stuff. Well, this was a quick one. We're going to do the back seven uh, tomorrow. So we might have to bring some boxes of tissues and Kleenex to wipe our tears away. But <laughs> so I know the bank's going to have me crying probably because I'll be laughing so hard about some of the stuff he's going to say. <laughs> so we, uh, but we do, uh, we're going to pick up a, 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 I think a pet smart sponsorship for aquariums full of fish. Thank you, bank. You know, well, Urban, loves, of- play, Urban loved to play find the fish, right? <laughs> Oh, find the fish. Yeah, we're going to have a whole aquarium full swimming around. So it's sponsored they did last by SeaWorld. Year. They did yeah. last year. They, maybe not this year. Maybe we'll okay. well, that's, maybe they'll be changed. I love that. Well, um, Nevada, you got any closing uh, remarks on this on this wonderful Thursday night? Nah, it's, I, I just I think I, I just can't wait to see this team hit the field. And I think it's going to be exciting. I think, you know, offensively, we're going to be doing so many interesting things with the, with the team and and, uh, you know, defensively, you know, I think our last memories of the defense were so bad against Alabama that it can only get better. So uh, so I'm looking forward to exercising some of those demons and getting back on the field. Can't wait. You know, so, something that I'm, I'm going to close with is something that was real interesting. It would be really motivating for me if I was Haskell Garrett is the fact that I remember he got named first team All-American last year. But he wasn't even named, I don't even think he was named first or second team all big 10 by the coaches or media last year, which I don't know if I've ever seen that before. I think he was like an honorable mention. He might've been the second team by the media, but the coaches didn't think enough of him to make him a, because there were a couple guys from Iowa and some other guys that they, they gave those, those awards to. And, but then he, he made one of the all American teams. So he got a tree and you know, he's called an all American, but it's like when the coaches are you know, in, the, in the conference, aren't giving you like kind of your due, like they're not, they don't think much of you if they don't make you at least second team all big 10, but then all of a sudden you get like a solid American word. It's, that was something that really motivated me. It's something that I actually asked Haskell about. Cause that was, you know, it's weird. Cause like, you know, usually if you're an all American, you're obviously all conference and everything else, but that was a, uh, it'll be interesting to see if he can find a new level um, this year. I mean, cause I'd be motivated as can be if, if I knew none of those coaches voted for me for all big 10, but somehow I made all American. So that's a little closing nugget. And uh, I appreciate you too. As always, this has been the Scoop World Order. The DBs and the linebackers will be coming tomorrow. So thank you, fellas. All right, Kurt. All right, thanks, boys.